fundamentally, the Manitoba challenge is overcoming the way we've historically managed water in one silo and land in another silo. We've done this since basically Manitoba entered Confederation. It was part of the package of technologies that were introduced by the Dominion Land Survey to impose this hard separation of land and water issues through the, through the section mile system that you see on the rural landscape. What we've done is we've, we've undermined natural functions, the way natural systems function, and we're going to have to get those natural functions back in our watersheds, on our landscape, if we want to adapt to climate change. Basically, there's a, 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 a raft of things we can do to better coordinate water and land management. And first and foremost, it involves uh, understanding how important natural watershed function is to adapt to climate change. Um, climate change is expected to, uh, ha we're expected to experience more extreme events. More of the annual precipitation uh, will come early in the year. We'll have more uh, runoff in the spring, but it'll be drier later on in the growing season. So it becomes ever more important to slow the flow during spring runoff, for example, and har harness that water resource because we'll need it later in the growing season. So we need to let that water infiltrate. So we'll have it, we'll have the soil moisture when we need it, when it in, in the, the, the hotter summers that we're expected to have with climate change. So we can still have, have food production in this part of the world. But fundamentally what it means is a new ethic of water stewardship. And we understand that we can conserve water through watershed management. So the first order of business is to, is to understand that, is to, is to build our capacity to, to think about that new ethic of water conservation and stewardship by integrating land and water management. And the second priority is to invest in the institutions that are going to help manage that resource. Because right now, you know, as, as is the case almost everywhere in the world, you manage water over here and agriculture over here and municipal infrastructure over here. And there's no connective tissue that pulls this together and says, we're looking at this as a whole. This, this system doesn't function as a bunch of little silos. This system functions as an integrated whole, and that's called integrated water resources management. And you do it through watersheds. And that's the kind of institutional capacity we need to invest in. And that's not the way we do it here now, unfortunately, nor is it the case anywhere else in the world. We just happen to um, uh, be exposed to the problems of not seeing that integration because of the floods we get here, because of the droughts we get here, because of the situation in Lake Winnipeg. If we do this well, we not only conserve water, to adapt to climate change, so we have the water later in the growing season when we need it, but we also reduce nutrient loads on Lake Winnipeg. There's research now that, that shows that the vast majority of the nutrients that wash off the land and into the lake occurs during spring runoff. So the same things we need to do to adapt to climate change, which is slow the flow, let it infiltrate, conserve soil moisture, spread it over the growing season. That's exactly what we need to reduce nutrient loads on Lake Winnipeg. Our job is to, is to point out these connections, point out a solutions agenda, really. And that is the multiple benefits of, of watershed management, of, of uh, uh, ecosystem management through watersheds. And we do that in part through the uh, 
through highlighting the role of ecosystem services, which is very much the message of the Millennium Ecosystem Assessment and the economics of ecosystems and bi biodiversity. And we're getting, you know, serious people, uh, you know, serious economists, bankers, starting to recognize how, value, how valuable well-functioning ecosystems are. And it's our job, I think, in this part of the world to, um, to help raise, the, raise that uh, awareness and point out the value of our own uh, ecosystems, our watersheds in our backyard, and how valuable they are um, for purposes of climate adaptation in Lake Winnipeg, and to guide uh, uh, policymakers and decision makers as to what the solution agenda looks like. So we will actually be producing um, conceptual models and analytical models for this purpose, for this uh, watershed management approach uh, for Manitoba. So I see a strong role for IISD uh, in helping government uh, with this solutions agenda. Um, but we obviously we can't do it all. We can't do it without the full weight of government behind this. Can we inspire? Can we catalyze? Can we, on some issues, lead? Certainly. But really, you need the full weight of government behind the programming decisions needed to do this.